We all have greatness within us. Mental fitness helps us unlock it. It's an ongoing practice, one where you approach your mind as something to flex, not fix. I want to introduce you to a few people whose stories can inspire us in our own growth through mental fitness. My name is Chloe Kim, and I'm a professional snowboarder. I'm Adam Grant. I'm an organizational psychologist at Wharton, author of Think Again, and a member of the Better Up Science Advisory Board. My name is Blue Mendoza. I'm here to talk to you today about how I transform and change my life. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank Sorry. you so much for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you, Prince Harry. How are you? Trying to get to see each other in person. Throughout the years of traveling around the world, what I saw was the similarities of experiences of trauma, of loss, of grief, of being human. Yeah. That building up of resilience is absolutely critical. Everyone is aware that if they don't take care of their bodies, then their functioning is going to suffer. I don't think we have the same awareness around mental fitness. If we do not invest in mental fitness, performance cannot be sustained. Your body can't function without your mind. What does the term mental fitness mean to you? To me personally, yeah. um, it means being at peak cognitive and emotional functioning. The ability to keep yourself sane. It's something that you have to do every day. Mm. It's an exercise. It's a plan and it's a commitment. Very well put. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously nailed it, okay. Mental fitness is reminding yourself to take your finger off a of pause and to press play, to live your life, to keep moving forward. You are a two-time Olympic gold medalist, hailed as the queen of snowboarding. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> is there a day-to-day -day thing that you do for your, your mental fitness? What is your secret? Like, how do you become so good? My... And, and stay there. <laughs> I would say, okay, so one, just those little reminders, like, you know what, I am doing my best. I'm working really hard. I have to pivot and find a solution to create a positive outcome. What goes in to your own proactive practices? Non-negotiable workout time, six days a week. Six days a week you work out? Yeah, and that's... I, I could tell. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure how to respond to that. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> but, uh, that physical fitness routine is a big part of my mental fitness. When I'm running, when I'm lifting weights, when I, when I play ultimate frisbee, um, that's when I experience mm. the, the total um, freeing of my thoughts from, from distraction. Part of a mental exercise that I do is that I actually journal. What happened yesterday? What I want to accomplish today? I'm a little scared today. I'm afraid of that meeting that I have to walk into today. Yeah. It takes only about 15 minutes, but like any exercise, right? You have mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. And when I actually do it and I close the journal and I turn on the computer, I don't have to put on a fake smile mm. anymore. Yeah. How has strengthening your mental fitness helped you to continue to achieve new levels of performance? I know who to turn to when I'm having a hard time. I know how to express and cope with my emotions. And I'm more open now. The relationship between mind and body is very important yeah. and it has a lot to do with my success. And I love your confidence, especially being so young. That's a whole part of this, right? That's you've had to teach yourself confidence. Absolutely. I remembered the, the tools that my coach gave me in order to Get, not get through the day, yeah. not survive through the day, yeah. but to love the day. And thrive through and it. And thrive through it. How do you know? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, think we, <laughs> I think we maybe have the same coach. <laughs> might. Wow. We all benefit from having a coach. Coaches help individuals change their behaviors and improve their circumstances. A coach can see those dynamics in a way that, that people who are living them often yeah. are just blind yeah. to. I did not know that type of relationship could even exist. Especially over a computer. Especially over a computer. <laughs> How do you do that? I have such high standards for myself. I, I beat myself up. And so really my coach is always just reminding me that, you know, calm down. It's good. There's always tomorrow. But also acknowledge the progress you have made today. I have such an amazing coach. He, he understands that I'm the type of person that needs to talk through things. And um, he has this amazing ability to do that and get me into a good headspace and make me excited to like try this new trick or like try this new run um, and really pushes me in that way. How can we create more resilience for people? Not just a better version of themselves at work, but also a better version 
for their partners, for their family, and their whole community. We all want to grow, but it's so hard to do that on our own. If we can design individual routines, um, organizational cultures, team norms that prevent burnout and languishing, it's a lot easier to maintain peak performance. And the difference it makes is huge. I mean, you see it on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's enormous. I, I cannot overstate the importance of a leader and manager saying, I care more about your well-being than I do about your results. That's so true. I can do anything, but I have to practice. This was a step for me to get to where I wanted to be. Better you. Better all. Better us.